there's many challenges we face in the Western Balkans. I think, you know, the first one, the most immediate one is, is actually bizarre. It's because it's so beautiful here. It's so amazing here. The big investors are now turning their gaze on this part of the world. And they don't see it like we do. They don't see a beautiful place that needs to be preserved that everybody can enjoy. They don't see an amazing community that lives together in a traditional way that should be preserved. They just see bucks. They see this beautiful landscape and they just think, well, you know, if we can carve that up into parcels and pour concrete on it, then we can make ourselves X million. It's pretty crass, actually. It's, they have no class, these people, in my opinion. But that, that's the biggest threat that we face. The second threat that we face is that, obviously, the big investors can easily seduce government. You know, politicians love to be able to announce that they've bought in 20 million, 30 million, whatever it is, investment into the country. And it can be a quick win for a small country like this that doesn't have a lot of income. So it's, it's getting government to understand as well that, you know, perhaps what we're offering as a tourism model is a bit more long term than a big investor who's willing to drop 500 million next year. I think something I find in common with many businesses around the world is not really understanding the value as well of, uh, as well as of, of um, adventure tourism, sustainable tourism. This is now a $680 billion business and it's growing at 23% per year. So it, we're not a bunch of tree huggers. We're not just trying to protect this place because we want to live here and enjoy it, but also because we can earn an income in a much more sustainable way than if we accept mass tourism. So those are the two key problems. And then beyond that, it's really understanding. Because of the recent history here, they haven't had tourism in a long time, big tourism. And they tend to look back at the tourism models of this 80s, 70s and 80s. And uh, so they need to catch up with the revolution that's taking place in tourism in the last 25 or so years.